He took over where the Green Goblin left off. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Roderick Kingsley, otherwise known as the Hobgoblin. Name's Hobgoblin, and you're right on time for your funeral. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We've chosen to primarily follow the storyline that unfolded in 1983's The Amazing Spider-Man No. 238, which was then expanded upon in 1997's three-part miniseries, The Hobgoblin Lives. The shadowy nemesis of Spider-Man, this villain is unique for being both the unofficial heir to the deceased foe, the Green Goblin, and for having his true identity shrouded in mystery for nearly a decade. That was before it was ultimately revealed that he was the famous fashion designer, Roderick Kingsley. In the beginning, before he was a well-known player in Peter Parker's world, this villain used criminal associates to smear the reputation of his competitors. As it turned out, one of these associates, a petty crook named George Hill, was on the run from Spider-Man. This led him to hide in the sewers in order to lose the web slinger. There, he accidentally located the secret lair of the Green Goblin. Informing Kingsley, his boss arrived to inspect what he had found. Recognizing the power and importance of the find for his criminal endeavors, Kingsley killed his associate, relocated all of his findings, and burned the original place down, before beginning to dive into Norman Osborn's journals and experiment with his technology. Deciding to take the theatrical route to crime, while still operating his fashion empire, Kingsley modified the Green Goblin costume to make it more fearsome. He also improved the available equipment and weapons, despite having no background in engineering, though he had a keen analytical mind. While stealing resources and technology from Osborne manufacturing, such as an armored battle wagon, he began to yearn for a chance to succeed where Osborne had failed with the death of Spider-Man. However, during their first battle, he was quickly defeated since he lacked the Green Goblin's enhanced super strength. This caused him to reproduce Osborne's formula while filtering out the problems that caused insanity. Again, he achieved this despite having no formal training in the field of chemistry, not that the readers seemed to mind at the time. Testing the formula on another henchman named Lefty, Kingsley sent him out as the Hobgoblin to face Spider-Man. When Lefty failed his mission, Kingsley killed him by controlling the glider and crashing it into a building so that the mess couldn't be traced back to him. However, Spider-Man suspected the deception. Afterward, Kingsley used the Hobgoblin persona to blackmail the well-known socialites of New York. This led Spider-Man to track the Hobgoblin to his lair. There, he destroyed all of the journals written by Norman Osborn. A final battle with Spider-Man ended with the Hobgoblin's battle wagon flying into the river, leaving the floating goblin mask as the only trace of the villain. Surviving, the Hobgoblin opted to brainwash and frame others in order to have them take on the identity of the Hobgoblin, including Peter Parker's friend, Flash Thompson. Eventually, longtime fans were shocked when the Hobgoblin was finally unmasked and shown to be Roderick Kingsley, a minor character from the 1980s. He had apparently gone undetected since he had frequently used his twin Daniel to help create alibis and appear at Hobgoblin attacks. A Spider-Man foe yet to receive the silver screen treatment, the Hobgoblin did appear on the small screen in the 1994 cartoon series as a henchman hired by Norman Osborn. Hobgoblin, you failed me miserably. <laughs> no, you failed to tell me Spider-Man would get involved. It's just a bump in the road. It does raise my rates, though. Leading up to this, he provided comic book fans with a much-needed break from the Green Goblin and gave the series a compelling and long-running mystery. That is, of course, until the Green Goblin eventually returned to retake his mantle. How did you flip that? Because I'm the real deal, you cheap imitation. I must have gotten hit hard. I'm seeing double. Are you a fan of the yellow-faced goblin, or do you prefer the original green variety? For more comic book origins of your favorite comic book characters, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Don't forget me, Spider-Man. I'm not going to forget you.